Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Ready, Set, Cheer on State Champs W. I'm Candace Wu, and I'm so, so excited to be here with um, Christina Wilson, varsity coach, varsity head coach at Brighton High School. You've been a vet here on the show, Christina, um, and most people know who you are who know anything about cheer, but can you give us a little, a little rundown of when you started cheer up to now? Oh my, <laughs> right. So I yeah. cheered, you know, obviously middle school, high school, that kind of thing. Um, but as soon as I graduated high school, I started coaching right away. And where'd you I go to high school? In, I went to Gibraltar Carlson. Oh, I didn't know Yeah, that. so I started my coaching career down in Gibraltar, and I coached in Gibraltar for 11 years. Uh, coached Shumay Middle School for five, and then went up to the varsity level, won some state championships there with Gibraltar Carlson, and then got my full-time teaching job out here in Brighton and moved out to Brighton. I've been coaching and teaching here for 12 years, something like that. <laughs> wow, congratulations. You've had, a, you've had an, a fantastic career in cheerleading, and I'm curious, what made you start cheerleading? What, when did you know you wanted to be a cheerleader? It's super funny. It was just um, my brother was playing football at the middle school level and I saw the cheerleaders on the sidelines and then it really kind of amped up a lot in 95 when Carlson won their state championship in 1995. I was in like, I don't know, sixth grade or something like that. And I said, that's it. Like, I want to do that. And, you know, my dad's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. That's what I want to do. And just haven't stopped since. Oh, my goodness. Who knew you would be here? Did you ever think you'd be a coach for this long, especially? <laughs> well, I mean, no, certainly. If you would have told me, like, way back when that I would be coaching cheerleading for 23 years and have had as much success as I had, I would n never believe you. That's so wild. Yeah, I, I just love hearing the stories of people, you know, through the stretch of time because, right, who, who would think you'd be here for 23 years and going forward as well, right? You're right. just, you're still fresh and on fire. <laughs> it's been a fun ride, I'll tell you that. Yeah, well, tell us about the season. I know that you um, just last week had an injury on the team and completely changed all three rounds to come and win first place at, was it KLAA? Um, and just did amazingly. Tell us about how yeah. what, what that was like this last week. Yeah, so I mean, every team in every season in every year goes through some type of injury and replacement protocols that they have to go through. It, it's just a part of what we do, and it's not unique to cheerleading. It's it's sports in general. You have to be able to pivot, and you have to um, replace kids because of varying different reasons. So we did have um, a three round girl go down on Friday during the assembly and we came in on Friday and we replaced her and we rocked it and we were ready to go. So it's just a part of athletics in general. But I think what helps us is that we as a team, we're constantly rotating girls in and out of the cheer and all around in different spots and different locations. So when it comes down to it and I need someone to fill around one position, chances are I have several people that know all of the parts of the cheer, you know, and they're performing it all the time. And so kids are in and out. It's just a natural part of what we do. So it, it really is, I, I should say I'm kind of lucky because they just know, they get it, they understand. And, you know, they don't tend to get too crazy stressed out when something like that happens because they know that we have people prepared. That's great. And that sounds also like the culture that you create with them. You help them understand that this is a team effort, that they're ready to come in or out as needed. Tell us a little bit more about that mentality that you teach them. Yeah, so we kind of always are just in that position of saying, like there are 16 spots on the floor in one and three, and they don't belong to anybody. In fact, they belong to me. The spots belong to me, they're my spots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have yeah. to rent them from me with hard work. <laughs> 
And if this you are your real estate here paying your rent, <laughs> right? Like yeah, you have estate. to pay your dues to keep that spot. And we are just constantly moving people around it. And the mentality behind it truly is you have to work hard for what you want, right? You have to put in the work. And we shuffle people around and put them in new spots just and kind of say, hey, look, we're doing what's best for the team as a whole. And we are trying to give ourselves the best chance to win. So whether that means you're front and center or you're back corner, it doesn't matter. You are giving us the best chance to win. And so that's kind of how we operate. And that's the mentality that we have for putting kids and having them in and out or moving around in rounds. Fantastic. Yeah. So it sounds like they're just ready. They're practicing just as hard as everyone else that might be in the round or not. Like everyone's practicing just as hard. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm curious, um, what is what is your take on where we are in the season? What's happening right now? We just have leagues. Tell us what you're seeing as you look out across the state of Michigan. I know we are in the thick of league championships right now. There are a lot of schools that have either wrapped up their league championships or are doing so this week. So we are getting heavy into title time where it's coming down to adding those lines to banners. You know, you're adding your years, league championships, and as we start to approach MHSAA tournament with districts and regionals and state finals, so you're seeing a lot of teams that are kind of feeling that um, mix of the end of the season is approaching, the, the emotional aspect of the end of the season approaching, but also that heavy, intense pressure of let's get this done, let's work hard and let's get it done so that we can, we can achieve the goals, which are ultimately what you set out for the season at the end, right? Winning those those championships. Absolutely. We're about a month away, less than a month away from state finals. In this final yeah. stretch, what's the mentality? What's necessary? Where's everybody at? Yeah, so I kind of mentioned that you're walking a delicate balance of physical strength. You know, bodies are tired at this point in the season and mentally they're tired at this point in the season too. So it's a lot of pushing through the fatigue while also managing the excitement that is around those titles. So I find myself at this point in the season working a lot more on the mental aspect and really talking about like, we've got to grind it out. We've got to get through this. You know what I mean? Like get excited. This is a big deal. And also not pushing them so hard where their bodies, they're just physically tired at this point. So um, I find myself at this point in the season doing a lot of mental exercises with the kids. Oh, that's fantastic. What, can you give us some examples of that mental practice that you're doing? Yeah, so we'll do motivational videos or, or motivational um, recordings like on Spotify that we listen to. We'll talk a lot about what are we trying to accomplish and how do we get there? Not just physically, but like truly, what do we have to do to get there? And sometimes it's as simple as saying, well, we just need to be more calm when we get to the competition. Or when we hit the floor, we just have to remember that we know how to do this. <laughs> we are well-trained, we are well-conditioned athletes. We know how to get it done. And so taking away that, uh, anticipation factor a little bit and getting more into the confidence and the mental toughness piece. I like that a lot. There's so much intentionality in that and you're helping the girls just think about and become more aware of what's going on and how they can step into more of what they want. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we go so hard. I mean, our, our sport is a nine month sport and you just have to take time sometimes to be intentional about the mental aspect of the game in conjunction with the physical aspect. Absolutely. Yeah, it feels like at this point it's all coming to a head and that meaning that you're making with it, um, the steps you're taking to improve mentally, the, the mental toughness and the physical toughness just have to come together here. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And this is the most important time, you know, as you're, you're reaching for those goals and 
in trying to get those titles that I know so many teams across the state are really vying for right now. Absolutely. I'm, and I'm so excited for Brighton. You've come such a long way with your team. Um, how's the season going? Yeah, we've, you know, like any team, you've got some ups and downs. You've got some good days. You've got some not quite as great days. Um, but, you know, we work hard. We've been really happy. You know, we had got that KLA championship last weekend, which was really big for us. Um, and, yeah, we, we've won some invitationals here and there. And it, it's been a really, really great season. The girls are just physically tough. They're mentally tough. They're locked in. They're nice kids that just really are a joy to be around so it, it's really kind of all coming together sounds like they're all around fantastic young women and this is one of the things I wanted to talk about was leadership in this sport and um, this this uh, just a couple of days ago February 7th was National Girls and Women in Sports Day and you also just took a couple or a handful of girls to the Women in Sports Leadership Conference. Um, what was that like and how do you see leadership in your team in this sport? Yeah, so the MHSAA hosts the Women in Sports Leadership Conference every other year, and I am very intentional about taking some of my girls to it because it's such an empowering place to be. They, they get to um, talk to athletes from their sport. They get to talk to athletes from other sports, relate to them, kind of share their thoughts and feelings about seasons and how they go. And probably most importantly, they get to hear from women leaders around the state in various positions. And so I think it's so important and, and such a big aspect of what they do to not only focus on the athletic and physical ability, but what can they do as leaders and, and how can they become good, strong leaders well beyond their high school years. What are some of, the, some of the takeaways that the girls that you took had when they went to this conference with you? Yeah, it was really interesting. So I asked them after it was over what they thought and they were just so happy. They were so excited to get back to practice and try to implement some things. And it's funny because one of the kids said that they really loved the session that was about taking care of your body nutritionally Ooh, versus yeah. anything that is like physical. So uh, getting that type of information, you know, like when we're at practice, we're not always talking about nutrition and fueling their body. I mean, we do some, but I think she took a lot of way of how to fuel her body properly. Um, they talk about, oh, you know, being so excited about leadership ideas and what they can do uh, in the coming years. I always take juniors and sophomores so that they can apply it for a year or two moving forward. But they always seem to get really good ideas about what they can do just to bring the team together and to feel more like like one. I love that. And I, I love that you're um, investing in these girls before they take off so that they can have that chance to apply it and bring it to their team and see how it goes and work with it. That's just really exciting. Yeah, well, you know as well as I do that the sport of cheerleading and, and the physical ability that these cheerleaders have does not get respected even close to enough as it should. So if I can put them in a position to feel like they have power and they can share what they do and they can be proud of what they do as athletes and even raise awareness a little bit, then we're definitely going to go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, and cheerleading is just eaten up by so many people these days. Everyone loves it. I can't say everyone, but I want to say everyone. They're just watching it left and right on social media. It's exciting. And I think that um, it's really getting highlighted how important the leadership element is. So that's super exciting. And uh, speaking of leadership, uh, I had a question from um, someone else in Michigan who's coaching. How do you select captains? Do you just choose seniors? Do you look for certain attributes? Does someone just show up yeah, and be I, like, yep, that person? You know, I actually have several different ways that I choose my captains. They, all my captains get chosen on a different basis. One of my captains um, gets chosen from an essay. They have to write an essay of why they want to be captain. And so I read the essays and they get chosen that way. 
Um, another one is chosen by team vote. So who do the kids truly want to follow? I think that's important to recognize who that the kids respect and want to follow. Um, one gets chosen by the coaches. Who do we see as a leader? And it's not necessarily always the most vocal person or the most talented, but who do we think truly can step up and be a leader and is worth following? And depending on some years, it depends on how many kids we have, it, how many captains we do. Um, in the past, I have also done um, like a point system, a captain's point system. How many people are you getting to open gym during the off season? How many people are you getting to extra lifts during the off season? Every extra person you get there, that means that they're willing to follow you. You're getting a point. There's a lot of accountability in that. That's like concrete accountability. Yeah, because if they're willing to reach out and go out of their comfort zone to call mm -hmm. a freshman or to call someone that they're not used to calling, to get them to come to some of those out of season events, then you know that they're willing to put in the work and that they're willing to, to have and take those leadership roles. Absolutely. And what other things do you see your leaders or your captains doing? Every single one is different. Every single captain and leader is totally different. I have one that's the the life of the party, if you will. She's just funny and she lightens the mood and she's a good time while also being like, hey, look, we gotta get this done kind of thing, you know? I have other leaders that are very straight to the point. Do this, get it done, and that's the end of the story. Right? Mm -hmm. I have other leaders that are are not quite so vocal, but they're they're grinding every day. And so when we talk about that grind, we say, if you want to do it, this is who you have to emulate. So it, it just kind of, they all take on different roles. And sometimes in the past, what the team has needed the most has just been the leader who's quiet, but available, available for anything. That's, that's so encouraging to hear, Christina. And I think it's encouraging for anyone listening to this that you can be a leader in your own way, no matter what personality you have or how you might do it. Because to that quiet person, they may be like, I don't, I don't do that sort of like direct talk or the encouragement all the time, but I'm really present and I'm focused or I'm really intentional or I'm kind or whatever it is that they really bring to the table. So thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, it, I mean, it truly takes all kinds to have a successful team. You have to have it. You know, I, I think there's a situation and a scenario for anyone and everyone to be a leader in their own way. So to have those different types and for the girls to know that they can be leaders in different ways, I think really contributes to our success as well. Absolutely. Yeah, great. Um, so let's just shift gears a little bit and talk a little bit more about what's gone on in the cheer world this week. Um, what was your major competition for the KLAA and um, what was that like? Yeah, so I mean we had that injury the night before so we were kind of um, working on Friday to just manage that and making sure that we felt confident going into Saturday. I mean, as I'm sure you can imagine, the confidence took a little bit of a dip going into Saturday just because, you know, every time there's new people and there's at least a little bit of hesitation that goes into that. But, you know, a lot of reassurance, letting them know, hey, we do this. We do this all the time. Everybody does this all the time. It doesn't matter what collection of 16 people are on the floor. We're going to get it done. And so we went in on Saturday, ready to just kind of show that we can take the punches, roll with them and keep going and not miss a beat. And you did. So that was, mm -hmm. yeah. So you that did. was our, our KLAA championship. And let me tell you what, it was not easy by any means. Um, our big competition at that um, time was Heartland. And they, ooh, man, they put up a fight. They always do. So we, we were able to come out on top, but it was not easy. Was it a close um, point difference at the end? I, I didn't get to see the scores, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was within two points, I think, somewhere like yes. that. Wow. Yeah, I cannot wait to see both of you together at the next, you know, whenever we're all together. Yeah, yeah. that'll be districts. <laughs>
and then okay, angels yes. and you know kind of like <laughs> yeah yep moving on the from there <laughs> yeah fantastic what other teams were at the competition Oh, we had, this was all our KLA, so we had our local schools with Howell doing an awesome job, Novi, who just continues to impress me every year with how much that they have grown. Same with Northville, they're doing a great job. Livonia Stevenson, Livonia Franklin, we had Wayne Memorial there. I, I know I'm forgetting some teams and I, I apologize for that, but um, just seeing the growth from the past couple years coming out of COVID, you know, like has been incredible. Yeah. Especially with the adjustments that teams had to make during COVID and then coming out of that, I think that's really exciting. Now, um, being a coach for 23 years and then a cheerleader before that, which teams are you keeping your eyes on this year? Well, I feel like I'm biased, right? I'm partial to Carlson. I am like always just in awe and impressed. And I swear to God, if you would have said to me that like they would have so many different head coaches over the past few years and still be able to keep their success, I would be like, what? Um, but th they're always impressive and the battle that they put up between Allen Park every year is just phenomenal cheerleading phenomenal cheerleading you can never ever ever discount all of the rochester schools they're always going to put great cheerleading out on the floor every single time um, i love the d3 schools that i'm seeing that are now kind of on the come up with crosslex having one last year and now we've got armada and never ever ever discount notre dame prep we've got like some really powerhouse D3 schools that are coming up and that's really exciting to see. You love to see the sport grow, right? Yeah. And then D4 Hudson, I mean, let's be honest, mm -hmm. they're incredible. Completely. I cannot wait to see more of them and all the teams you named. We had um, leagues over in the, with all of the Rochester schools with Troy Athens and Lake Orion. Wow, that was a really tight and fun competition. Um, Rochester took the win of the whole league and um, that day as well. Wow, well, here we go into the final stretch. Christina, are you, are you ready? Very much, very ready. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I can't wait to see Brighton again. Um, for a full list of the competitions coming up, check out the website. Um, anything else you want to share, Christina, before we close out today? No, just thanks so much for having me. I always love being on State Champs and love sharing my knowledge about the sport. Thank you so much. It was fantastic to hear from you. I loved everything you shared. And um, go Brighton. And Ready, Set, Cheer is presented by Lawrence Technological University. Be curious, make magic. Ready, Set, Cheer is also brought to you by the Michigan High School Athletic Association promoting the value and values of educational athletics. The Michigan Army National Guard, proud partner of the MHSAA. And the Detroit Athletic Club Foundation Athlete of the Year Award. Applications now being accepted until March 31st, 2024 for the Male and Female Athlete of the Year. Download the application today at dacathleteoftheyear.com. You cannot be nominated if you don't apply. <laughs>